Kairu was an ugly poor child, who was bullied by his parents at a young age for being the seraph of the end, and his dad hated that he gave life to a demon. The abuse only got worse over the years, until one day, his dad was ready to isekai him into a fantasy world. But Kairu started running away until he ended up outside. However, the only thing he saw outside was the lifeless bodies of his friends, and even though his dad stabbed him in the back, he managed to survive and ran away from home. The only place that would give him shelter was the sketchy orphanage in the ghetto, where Mika tried introducing himself to him. However, Kairu had seen too much abuse in his life, revealing that his own mother isekai'd herself because she had the worst child possible. Even so, Mika extended his hand, saying that he'll become his new family. But even though he enjoyed his short life with them, a deadly virus killed everyone who was 13 years or older, and Truck Kun was having a field day isekai'ing everyone's ass. But Plain Kun wanted a taste of the action. As vampires began invading the city, Kairu and his new family tried sneaking around the streets, and eventually managed to make it back to their orphanage, where they found their caretaker had entered Nirvana. From all around their sides, vampires surrounded them, and Voldemort took them away on a truck to have them be raised as livestock, where they grew up in a farm for four years to have their blood harvested. However, Kairu was sick of living a miserable life destined to become someone's food, but as he screamed those words, he saw vampires stepping on two little kids on the floor, so he ran to force them to apologize. But the vampire picked him up, and even when Mika tried apologizing on his behalf, the vampire threatened to throw him off the cliff while aiming to stab his heart. Just then, Lord Farid appeared from the stairs, so his lackey threw Kairu on the ground. Mika had always been Farid's favorite child, and when he invited Mika to come over to his mansion to suck his blood out, Mika agreed and stopped Kairu from screaming at him. That evening, he saw how all of them were eating curry, but because they rarely ever enjoyed eating anything except insects, Kairu knew that Mika sacrificed a lot of his blood to feed them. The girl told them to thank Mika when he comes back, so Kairu stayed up all night waiting for him. But when he eventually arrived, Kairu wondered just what he sacrificed for their food, saying that he'll offer his blood next time. However, Mika told him no one would want the blood of an ugly, disgusting, unloved, gloomy loser. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Besides, Mika revealed his real motive behind going to the mansion, and showed him the PG Valorant gun he got from Farid's mansion, along with a map for how they'll escape this farm. On top of that, Mika said that he got to play the sponsor of today's video, Honkai Impact 3rd, one of the greatest anime action games developed by Hoyoverse. Whether you're on the phone or PC, in version 6.9, Giggity, Fuhua will lead you to embark on a new adventure in a city called Phosphorus. And through the After the Blood Moon Fades event, captains will explore the final chapter in their storyline, while discovering the story of Tarisa. But that's not all, because Siren will make her appearance with her S-rank Miracle Magical Girl battlesuit. And with the incredible Promare collaboration, strive to unlock the Born in Flames outfit for Hersher of Flameshin, and I Chrono Navi's unique outfit, Burning Rescue Soul. And coming soon, dive into the unexplored surface of Mars as one of its pioneers, and engage in a combat system based on the Astral Ring, all in Part 2 of Honkai Impact 3rd. But don't worry about being alone, because Kiana, Mei, and Branya will be returning to join your expeditions, and both stories will be completely connected. Make sure to watch the official trailer on their channel. So what are you waiting for? Download Honkai Impact 3rd for free through the link in my description to support my channel, and use code PROMER to unlock these incredible rewards. Thank you to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring me. And when Akane heard they were talking about her favorite game, Kairu realized that the love of his life also played Honkai Impact 3rd, and knew he needed to protect her, so he agreed to Mika's plan of escape. Mika told her to wake up everyone, because they're finally saying goodbye to this world. And throughout the night, they began sneaking around the farm. For hours, they kept traveling across the entire city, and even hid across the alleys so the guards wouldn't be able to spot them. However, Voldemort with a nose wanted to take a second peek, but they had already managed to hide under the sewer. Eventually, they finally made it to the exit, but as soon as they got there, Lord Farid appeared, shocking them in their place. This entire time, he'd been luring them out to play his game, and had purposely planted that map so he can give them hope before leaving them in despair. Because in front of their eyes, he began sucking the blood out of one of the girls, but threw her body away when she was lifeless. Kairu's anger grew until he fired his weapon, but Farid vanished behind him and told him that since they were so smart, he'll let them know the truth. The exit behind him will let them reach their freedom, but they had to somehow get through him first. So Kairu shot his gun to buy them some time to run, but Farid dashed past him, grabbing one of the kids and eliminating her in that instant. 
Before their eyes, he began ending every single one of them, and with Akane being the last one left, he slashed her down. Nika told him to never forget they were family, grabbing the gun and rushing towards Farid. But as he dodged the first attack, Farid slashed through his chest and knocked his weapon away. However, Kairu ran with the gun and shot him in the head, eliminating him in that instant. Seeing the only person who gave him hope in his life about to pass away, Kairu promised to carry him out of here. But Mika begged him to not let their deaths go in vain, and pushed him off, screaming at him to run away already. Kairu cried while running, and as he kept running through the hall, he screamed at the top of his lungs until he started slipping down some snow. After falling for 100 meters, he saw the outside world again. But three men were expecting him as prophesized, saying that he's going to be their weapon of destruction against the vampires. But rather than saying anything, Kairu hugged the man, saying he'll eliminate every vampire even if it means giving his life up. After a few years, Kairu had become a vampire hunter, and as he patrolled the deserted street, two hunters burst out before him, narrowly dodging a monster's attack. When they told Kairu to run away, he told them that his destiny was to eliminate monsters and vampires, and as he drew his sword, he began charging towards it. As he slashed the monster's claws, he dodged another and began slicing it apart, eliminating it in that instant. But the following day, Kairu was sentenced to eight exhausting hours of school time, having violated the hunter's department regulation by attacking the monster on his own. When the teacher threatened to suspend him for not paying attention in class, Kairu told him that he would gladly suspend himself. After all, his only desire was to hunt and slay vampires, and a suspension from school would give him all the time he desires. However, a girl tapped him and introduced herself as Shinoa, and that she was an army surveillance officer who had been assigned to monitor his movements. With Kairu looking confused, she threatened to call for an extended suspension if he failed to listen in class. However, by the time he was relaxed, she told him that his suspension will only end after he makes a new friend. Four years ago, after Kairu escaped from the ancient vampire city and came across the three strangers, the leader introduced himself as Gurren. He told him that he was the head of the demon army, which haunted and eliminated vampires across the earth. He said that there were few survivors left, so he asked Kairu to join his army, and promised to train him in annihilating the vampires. Back in the present, Kairu remembered that Gurren had abandoned him ever since he joined the army and had refused to enlist him in the hunt for vampires. But when the class was over, Shinoa suggested that he make some new friends so his suspension would be cancelled. But he told her to f*** off and called himself a lone ranger. However, when she tried persuading him, he grabbed her and asked her to convince Gurren on his behalf so that he would be enlisted in the vampire extermination unit. But she showed him a note from Gurren, who said that he would only be accepted into the unit after making a new friend. Angered by the words, he tossed the paper aside and left the class. Inside the locker room, as Kairu was set to leave, he saw a boy, Yochi, who was getting bullied by a stupid ugly dude called Yamanaka. Hoping to rescue him, he decided to confront the bullies and told them to get lost. However, when Shinoa told him that attacking them would lead to further suspension, they utilized their opportunity and knocked him out. That afternoon, while returning from the school, Kairu asked Yochi why he was getting beat up, so the stupid kid told him that he had asked Yamanaka for a spot in the demon army after failing his entrance exam. Kairu thought that Yamanaka was the greatest and most useless loser in the world, and wondered how in the depths of hell he managed to get a spot, when even he was not welcomed. Realizing Yochi was the second greatest loser in the world, Kairu wondered if he was eager to get eaten by vampires. But Yochi told him that he was hoping to avenge the death of his sister, who had been ended before his eyes by a vampire. However, Kairu thought that he was still a useless loser, but as he began to leave, an explosion rocked a nearby building, and a system alerted the students that a vampire had escaped from the facility. Realizing it was his chance at achieving glory, Kairu told Yochi and Shinoa that he would end the vampire, and immediately hurried off. After forcing his way through the crowd, he hurried up the building and retrieved his weapons from his locker. Inside a classroom, he found a vampire that was ready to end a girl, and discovered that Yamanaka had peed his pants. Determined to slay her, he drew his sword and began charging towards her, but she dodged his slash, and after a spin, she lunged towards him. But he dodged, and was kicked aside before evading her punch and flipping across the room. As she dodged another slash, he swiftly sliced her arm off, but she snatched it back immediately. Realizing the girl was still alive, Kairu told Yamanaka to take her to a safe place, but the loser was too chicken shit to do anything. The vampire reattached her arm, and pulled an iron bar while threatening to drain all the tomato sauce in Kairu's body. 
As she began to strike him again, he blocked her with graceful skill, but she jumped over him and discovered that his sword had nicked her. After healing, she sprinted to him and narrowly missed his face, but he slashed off her plot armor. As she jumped back, he began firing his gun, but she evaded it and started healing again. She told him that he would be toast once she drained the girl's tomato sauce. But before she could, Yochi tackled her to the ground. However, when she tried to end him, Kairu blocked her claws, but she seized his neck and began pushing him out as they fell through the window and down the trees. When she discovered that he had impaled her, she told him that she was immortal and could not be killed. Luckily, Gurin stabbed her with his special sword, and she vanished before their eyes. With Kairu in shock, Gurin told him that he could only slay vampires with a special demon weapon, or with a powerful spell, and thanked him for defending the students before his arrival. However, Kairu was only interested in joining his team, so he demanded for an open slot. But Gurin told him that the rules were unchanged, and that he would only be accepted if he makes new friends. At that moment, Yochi appeared, delighted to see him alive. But as he stumbled, he bumped into Kairu and knocked him unconscious. Shinoa told Gurin that Yochi was Kairu's new friend, and that he had to keep his promise of allowing him to join his team. So the following day at the hospital, Shinoa told Yochi that he's been accepted into the Moon Demon Army, having fulfilled the requirements, and said that Yochi would be allowed to tag along as a useless parasite. A few days later, the girl Kairu had rescued from the vampire thanked him for his help and decided to give him a letter. Before he could open it, she vanished into the building, but when Shinoa appeared before him, he hid the letter away from her. Shinoa wondered if he was a virgin and asked him if he knew the process of plot development, but Kairu was only concerned with eliminating vampires, so he wondered why he was still forced to attend school after gaining a spot in the Moon Demon Army. Shinoa told him that she had no answer to his question, but said that his training to become an extermination unit had begun. As she showed him a strange key, a powerful demon emerged from it. Shinoa told him that she had made a contract with the demon, and as she vanquished it, she revealed her weapon. She said that she was a member of the Vampire Extermination Unit, and that the Scythe was her equalizer in battles against the vampires. However, Kairu thought that this was his opportunity to hunt vampires, so he threatened to take her weapon from her. But she told him that it was impossible to use it, as it was already assigned to her. Determined to fight anyway, he charged towards her, but she blocked all his attacks with her own and sent him sliding back. Before long, they started fighting again, and he narrowly dodged her blade before slashing through the stones. After he evaded another slash, Shinoa unleashed a demon from her side, and it lunged Kairu into the fence, making him lose all his strength. As Kairu and Shinoa began to head to their next class, Yochi hurried to them, with the stupid bullies coming after him. When Kairu asked them if they intended to kick his ass again, Yamanaka told him that they were going to apologize for beating him up a few days ago and hoped to become his new busboys. However, Kairu thought they were full of crap and wondered why they intended to become his busboy since he was too useless for his own good. So Yamanaka told them that they needed Yochi's help in rescuing the third member of their moronic group, who had gone into the Forbidden Chamber and never made it out. However, Shinoa told the morons that the Forbidden Chamber was a restricted place, and that they would be executed by the army if they were discovered to have gone close to it. A few hours later, Kairu asked Shinoa what the Forbidden Chamber was, so she told him that it was a secret room used by the army to train the new members of the Vampire Extermination Unit. After arriving at the Forbidden Chamber, she told him that only recognized members of the unit were allowed inside as everyone else would be possessed by a demon. When Yochi wondered how they would rescue the last bully, Shinoa told him that the moron was hopeless, and that he must have been possessed by a demon who would attack everyone in sight. However, Kairu was determined to find out for himself, and told them that he wants the power of the demon, so that he could get revenge on the vampires. After saying those words, he began to run down the steps and jump to the ground, charging with his sword. But as the dude blocked his strike, he pushed him off, and narrowly missed him with a slash. As Kairu tried attacking again, Shinoa restrained him with her scythe. She told him that the axe was possessed by a demon, and that it would take control over his mind if he touched it. However, when Kairu was determined to take it, Shinoa told him that his heart was weak and that the demon would use his desire for revenge against him. Kairu told her that he was a stubborn son of a bitch who would never back down from a challenge. So he threw his sword and started charging towards the dude. But as he slashed his axe, Kairu dodged it and kicked him off before catching it. However, he suddenly realized that he was back into his former life, and as his friends invited him to dinner, he wondered what in the hell was going on. Nika asked him when he intends to start eliminating the vampires since he had always sworn to get his revenge, but Kairu thought that he was in a crazy dream. 
as Mika held him. He promised to grant him powers for revenge, and darkness began to overwhelm them in that instant. Luckily, Kairu dispelled the shadows, and told Mika that he would not succumb to the demon's control. At that moment, the house began to crumble, and as Mika transformed to a demon, the shadows engulfed the room. By the time he woke up, Shinoa told him that he was lucky to be alive as she had feared that he would remain unconscious forever. With the demon defeated, Kairu wondered if he could take the axe for himself, but Shinoa told him that only Guren could assign him a weapon. However, since he had proven his abilities by resisting its control, she told him that he would be allowed to start his training inside the Forbidden Chamber. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, a monster was destroying the damaged city while the surviving humans ran to safety. However, Mika had became a vampire and started approaching the monster. As magical ropes bound his hand, he slashed it with his sword, killing it in an instant. With the humans safe, another set of vampires appeared before them and began to preach the same crypto scam as before, offering to protect them in exchange for their tomato sauce. When a little girl approached Mika, she offered him her own sauce as a gratitude for saving her. However, as Mika looked at her, he remembered his own story. A few years ago, after Kairu had escaped from Lord Farid's castle, a few vampires had arrived at the scene. But when one tried to end him, Queen Krull appeared inside the castle and told them that she wanted him for herself. However, when Farid woke up, she accused him of allowing Kairu to escape and threatened to destroy his empire. But with Mika close to passing out, she decided to turn him into one of her own and kissed him with her sauce, turning him into a living dead. The following day at school, a random guy bumped into Kairu and punched his face for looking so ugly and disgusting. But that evening, when Yochi asked him if he was hit by a bus, Kairu told him that he rammed his face into a telegraph pole. When they came across Shinoa, she asked him if he had gotten in another fight, but he told her that he was bitten by a mosquito. Stop the cap! <laughs> So she began to lead them to their new training space. When they arrived, they found a few students inside the class and discovered that Guren was their teacher. As Guren began to introduce them, he called Yochi a useless brain dead moron and said that Kairu was a stupid coward who could not kill a cockroach. However, Kairu was determined to redeem himself, so he told the students that he was the greatest fighter in the world and would not give two shits about their disgusting faces. He told them they were losers and said that they were better off running home to mommy. But Gurren punched his head for the stupid speech and directed him to a seat. However, Kairu discovered that his seat had been occupied, and as he threatened to beat up the dude, they realized that they had bumped into each other earlier. But as they began to trade punches, Gurren kicked them into the door. By the next day, a new instructor told the students that they had to pair up for a test, so that they would prove their ability as a team. However, when Shinoa paired up with Yochi, Kairu decided to pair up with his nemesis Kimizuki, and with no other students left, they bound themselves together. As puppet monsters began to emerge, Shinoa and Yochi dodged an attack. Kairu thought they would be easy to destroy, so Kimizuki suggested that they eliminate them immediately. But as they ran off, they bumped into each other and realized they were still bound. But as the puppets tried attacking again, they suddenly froze up, and the instructor announced that Kimizuki's sister was sick at the hospital. However, Kimizuki told them that it was merely a waste of his time, and suggested that they continue with their training. But Kairu thought he had lost his mind, and told him to abandon the training immediately. However, when Kimizuki remained determined to continue, Kairu punched some sense into him, and told him to care for his sister since she was his only family. That evening in the hospital, the doctor told Kimizuki that his sister was lucky to be alive, as the virus had begun to eat her up. However, Kimizuki believed she would survive and promised to take her to a better hospital after joining the Demon Moon Army. That night, when Kimizuki began to tell Kairu that he has no hope of making it into the Demon Moon Army, Kairu told him to have some faith and said that they would work things out together. As they became determined to make it into the demon army, they decided to make peace with each other. The following night, as Guren emerged from a meeting, Kairu tried to kick him, but he caught his leg and pushed him off. When Kairu demanded for his own special weapon to hunt vampires, Guren finally agreed to give him a contract. Excited by the news, Kairu promised to slay all the vampires, but Guren knocked him down for his prior attack. As Kairu arrived at a facility, he came across Shinoa, 
who told him that Guren had approved his desire to have a demon weapon. When Kairu thought they were merely tricking him, Shinoa told him that Guren always keeps to his promise. The following day in class, the instructor began to give the students their exam results, telling them that their score would determine their rank when they received their special weapon. However, when Kairu discovered that he had failed like the useless failure he was, he tried to hide his result. But Shinoa snatched it away, and he began chasing her across the class, hoping to retrieve it. However, he found it with a group of students who discovered that he was truly a disgraceful failure. So he snatched it away, and told Shinoa to stay away from his business, telling her that he merely needed a sword to be a great hero. By the time he started arguing with Kimizuki over his score, Gurin entered the class. After spotting him, Kairu began to demand for the weapon he had been promised, but Kimizuki pushed him off, and demanded for his own. However, Gurin thought they could not control the demon, and suggested that they work on their anger issues. But Kairu and Kimizuki began to argue again, and silenced each other with a punch. When Gurin asked if any of the students would be able to resist a demon's temptation, the instructor told him that Yochi was proving to be the best of them. So in hopes of seeing for himself, Gurin drew his sword, and thick shadows appeared around him. But as he stabbed the floor, the thick shadows spread across the class and onto the walls, as the students began to pass out. After discovering that Yochi was unfazed, Gurin returned his sword, and the shadows vanished in an instant. With them being the only students left standing, Gurin told them that they would be allowed to form a contract with a demon. But as they started heading down the steps, the instructor told Gurin that Yochi was too soft and useless to tame a demon. However, Gurin thought he was useless anyway, and told her that taming a demon was his best hope of surviving. As they arrived in the underground, Gurin told them that the most powerful weapons in the world were hidden inside this chamber, and that every weapon had its own demon. He said that the demons would take over their bodies if they were unable to defeat it, and would end them instantly. Bent on proving himself, Kairu pulled out a sword, and a light began to glow around him. As the demon appeared before his eyes, she told him that she can control his mind and can make him see whatever she wants. However, Kairu told her to screw herself and demanded for control over her powers. When she asked him why he desires it, he told her that he intends to avenge Mika's death. Hoping to use his desire against him, the demon told him to surrender himself to her so that she would have total control over his mind. As she vanished, his friends began to surround him and accused him of abandoning them. They told him to surrender himself to the demon, and promised to grant him all the powers in the world. However, Kairu could see beyond their bullshit, and demanded to have her powers before screaming that he needed it to protect his friends. In an instant, he was back in the spirit world, and the demon appeared before him. She told him that she likes him, and was willing to give him her powers if he stays determined to slay vampires. However, she told him that she would take control over his body if he was ever unwilling to slay a vampire. Kairu thought this was exactly what he desired, so he agreed to it. She introduced herself as Asuramaru, and told him to call unto her whenever he needed her powers. As she revealed herself in the darkness, she told him that their contract has been completed, and Kairu woke up in the real world. When he began to brag about defeating the demon, he discovered that Kimizuki had dispatched his own demon before him. However, Yochi was still lying unconscious. Inside his dream, the demon who had taken the form of his sister told him that he was too weak and useless to be in control of her powers. When Yochi told her that he intends to avenge her death, she told him that he was too moronic for the job, and that she would never give him control of her powers. Having said these words, she stuck her hand into his heart and promised to take up his revenge for him. At that moment, Yochi woke up and a wind split the statue before him. Guren told Kairu and Kimizuki that Yochi had failed to tame his demon, and that since it had taken over his body, they needed to eliminate him immediately. As he let out those words, Yochi launched an arrow at them, but Guren was unscathed. So Yochi jumped onto a new statue, and launched more arrows at Kairu and Kimizuki. But as the dust settled, Kairu jumped away from a new arrow. With Yochi launching relentless assaults, Kimizuki drew his blades and Kairu pulled his sword, ready to attack. As they started running forward, Kairu appeared behind him, ready to strike him down, but as he clashed with his sword, he knocked it away, hoping it would break Yochi's connection to the demon. But Guren told him that the demon was inside his body, and Yochi swiftly pulled him down, utilizing his distraction. When Kimizuki tried to end him, Kairu screamed at him to spare his life, and said that there was another way to help Yochi return to his mind. Kairu began to scream at Yochi, and told him to take control over his body, but he aimed his arrow at him. Determined to show his confidence, Kairu threw his sword away, but Shinoa and Kimizuki hurried to protect him. However, Yochi fired his arrow, 
and as he missed, he regained his senses and started running towards Kairu, but Guren kicked Kairu for throwing his weapon away, and told Yochi to quit being a useless disgusting weakling. When Kairu woke up, Guren told him to forget his friends from the past, and consider Kimizuki and Yochi his new family. As Guren began to leave, he told them that he would assign them to the front line of the war, as the vampires were close to breaching a nearby city. The next day, in a train, Kairu asked Shinoa why she was always following him around like a crazy obsessed stalker, so she told him that she was his guide and had been assigned to watch over him. But Kairu thought she was too dumb to understand her own words, and told her that he was eager to start slaying vampires. As they arrived, they entered into the facility, and discovered the wrecked city before them. However, when they spotted Guren and a girl below, they hurried to them, and found Yochi and Kimizuki waiting. The girl Mitsuba was screaming at Guren for making Shinoa the leader of their team, as she thought that she was more deserving of the role. After spotting Shinoa, her anger grew, and she ran towards her. But when Shinoa called her a grumpy useless little child, her anger grew again, and she summoned her blade, ready to destroy her, so Shinoa summoned her scythe. But as they clashed weapons, Guren slashed them away, and held them both, telling them that he would throw them inside solitary confinement if they continued to act like worthless children. So they apologized and promised to be on their best behavior. After a few minutes, Guren told them that he was heading in a different direction, and introduced Mitsuba to the team, calling her their new comrade. He told them that the demon army always scouted vampire territories with a team of five soldiers, since it was the only way of protecting the group. He told them to fight as a team, and that it was the only way for them to survive their battles. However, Kairu thought he needed none of them to support him, and told Shinoa that he would attack the first vampire he came across. As Mitsuba tried to kick him, he caught her foot, and wondered if she had lost her mind, but she told him that she was merely checking his reflexes to be certain that he was not a sorry ass loser. Kirin told them that their mission was to discover a vampire's settlement, and to rescue the humans who were serving as their dinner. So the team headed out, but when they arrived at the vampire territory, Mitsuba began to preach on monsters and vampires, and screamed for the team to be on the alert so that they would not be squashed by the enemies. As they arrived deep inside the territory, a little girl began to run from a monster. When Kairu tried to rescue her, Mitsuba stopped him and told him that it was a trap from the vampires. But when the monster knocked the girl aside, Kairu thought Mitsuba had lost her mind and told the team to screw itself. She caught him and told him that his interference would cause the team to be endangered. But as the girl arrived on a cliff and the monster tried pushing her off, Kairu told Mitsuba to screw herself and ran away. However, she ran after him, hoping to stop him. As the monster was pushing the girl towards the edge, the bus vanished, and it tried ending her. But Kairu slashed its claws and blocked another strike. After he screamed for the girl to run away, Mitsuba flew towards the monster and sliced off its claws. Before their eyes, three vampires began flying towards them. So Mitsuba told Kairu that the vampires always used a human as their bait before attacking the army, and told him to stay away from them. In a flash, one vampire struck Kairu's sword and continued attacking him as another joined. But he managed to ward them off before getting sliced across the face. As they charged again, Kairu summoned Asuramaru and unleashed thick fumes from his sword as mysterious marks began appearing across his body. When the monster rushed towards him, Kimizuki jumped before it and sliced it with double slashes. So Yochi launched arrows at its tail, and as Mitsuba jumped high, she ended it with her blade. When the vampires realized that they were from the extermination unit, they decided to call for backup, but Kairu cast a powerful slash at them, and was determined to stop them from leaving. However, Shinoa told him they had to retreat, as they had gone too deep in their territory. So he agreed, and watched as the vampires vanished. When they returned to the facility, Mitsuba began to scream at Kairu for putting everyone's lives in danger. He told her that he was sorry for leaving the team, but felt no regret for rescuing the girl. As the girl appeared before him, she thanked him for saving her. So Mitsuba told her not to be afraid, and said that the army would protect her. The following day, the girl told them that the vampire's settlement was inside an old train station. So after a few hours, the team headed out. But as they got closer to their destination, Mitsuba told them that they would have to run away if they were outnumbered by the vampires. However, Kairu thought her plan was whack and told her he would rather fight until his last breath. As they arrived at the station, Mitsuba warned the team to be cautious of the vampire's attacks, and told Kairu to quit acting like a stupid moron. Inside the station, they found several children who were looking frail and sick for having lost too much body juice. But as they headed down a tunnel in search for the vampires, Kimizuki wondered why the teenagers would not escape, since the vampires were away. 
Mitsuba told him that they were afraid of getting eaten by the monsters outside, as the vampires had promised to keep them safe. When they arrived at an abandoned floor, they spotted a vampire walking across. So Mitsuba summoned her weapon, and told the team to annihilate him. Kairu rushed forward, charging with his sword and stabbed the vampire with a strike. As he pulled his blade, the vampire vanished in that instant. Angered by his action, Mitsuba screamed at him for being reckless and tried to smack him. But he held her hand, and told her that he waited for her command before leaving his position. With Mitsuba staring in shock, he suddenly pulled her away and blocked the sword of a new vampire before kicking him back. As they began charging towards each other, Kairu cut him down with a single slash. Before long, the team arrived in another part of the station, and watched as more vampires appeared before them. With their weapons drawn, the team waited for the vampire's assault, but three other vampires broke through the glass and seized Mitsuba before she escaped. When Mitsuba realized they were given false information about the vampires, the leader told her that they had threatened to end the girl's family if she revealed the truth to them. With the team greatly outnumbered, Mitsuba told them to run away, but Kairu told her that he was determined to fight until his last breath. As he rushed forward, he began clashing swords with a vampire, while Yochi's arrow impaled the second. As Kumazuki battled one, Kairu pushed another, clashing with more swords and enduring slashes. Luckily, he blocked a sword and kicked the vampire, and as he ran towards the leader, he split him with a single strike and rescued Mitsuba. With the team gathered together, they prepared for another round of battle. That evening, they were able to rescue all the children and brought them to a new camp. When the girl spotted Kairu, she hurried to him and apologized for tricking the team, but he told her not to feel sad and said that she had done the right thing by choosing to protect her family. After he waved her off, Mitsuba appeared behind him and tried to thank him for saving her, but she arrogantly walked away. The following day, Kimizuki tried to hotwire a car, and when he was done, Kairu told him that he wants to have a test drive, but Kimizuki told him to scram since he could not drive a car. However, when he joined the rest of the team for breakfast, Kairu drove into a light pole, and it fell with a loud noise. A few hours later, they started driving to the next facility. However, as they got closer, they began to hear a terrible noise from across the city. Mitsuba told the team that it was coming from their destination, and warned them to be cautious of enemy attacks. As they got closer to their destination, they saw a vampire before them, and when Kairu discovered that he was a high-ranked vampire, he told Kimizuki to mow him down. But as they jumped out of the vehicle, the vampire stopped it and threw it towards them, exploding it to pieces. Yochi launched arrows at him, but he slashed them off and unleashed a powerful wind that was parried by Shinoa. As she told the team to stay in position, the vampire swooshed behind her, ready to cut her down. But Kairu smacked his sword away, and he jumped back. Realizing their opportunity, the team prepared to take him on, but two new vampires fell from the sky. Kairu suggested that they run away but Shinoa told him that they would be eliminated immediately. She said that their best bet was to fight with all their strength and to hope they would not all be slain. However, one of the ladies told the lead vampire that Lord Farid was awaiting him at the front line. So he sheathed his sword and told the team that he would end them the next time they came across each other. As a hand smacked Kairu in the back, he realized that the vampire was already behind him, but he merely wished him goodbye and swooshed away. Relieved by the outcome, Shinoa fell to her knees and was grateful that they were still alive. However, Kairu became angry as he thought the vampire was merely toying with them. He had hoped to have equal abilities with them and thought it was unfair that the high-ranked vampires were a lot stronger than him. Shinoa told him to learn magical curses if he desires to be equal with them, but that he would not need the support of the team, which would make them exposed to attacks. She told him that he was important to the team and thanked him for saving her life. Meanwhile, inside the facility, several soldiers launched arrows at helicopters, causing them to explode and crash. As they launched more arrows, the helicopters tried dodging them, but were impaled and exploded mid-air. However, when the soldiers began to think they'd won the round, a plane started flying towards the facility and crashed inside, before exploding and causing the walls to crumble. With this opening, two vampires emerged proud of their success, and several vampires began hurrying into the facility. At the same time on the east side, the team arrived and discovered that the facility was under attack. When an aircraft launched a missile at them, they jumped to the ground and hid behind a wall. As another began firing at them, they hurried away and hid behind another wall. Several vampires started descending from the aircraft, so as the soldiers attacked them, the team came charging out with their weapons. When Mitsuba charged with her blade, she jumped high and cut both vampires. As they clashed swords, Kairu blocked and slashed like a rebrand Zoro, while Shinoa slashed at another. 
but when an aircraft began firing at her, she blocked it and told Yochi to destroy it. As he tried to launch an arrow, a vampire jumped before him, but Shinoa sliced him in another. So Yochi fired his arrow and caused the helicopter to explode. And as Kairu and Kimizuki rushed forward, they sliced more vampires with their swords. With the battle over, the corporal appeared before them and thanked them for their support. As they began walking through the camp, he told them that the west side of the facility had been breached, and asked them to join the rest of the forces to fend off the vampires. Meanwhile on the east side, Gurren watched as the vampires drained the eliminated soldiers, and spotted Mika and Lord Farid together. But a lady appeared behind him, and asked him to join the war. As she said those words, a vampire started charging towards her, but a girl punched him back, causing him to vanish with a single blow. She was Mido, and was a high-rank member of the demon army. Before long, the others arrived, so Girin told them to eliminate Lord Farid before he entered the facility. At the same time, Lord Farid asked Mika if he would annihilate Kairu when they run into each other on the battlefield. But he jumped to the ground, ignoring his question, and began to leave. Four years ago, when Mika was first turned into a vampire, he had refused to drink from any human so he would not complete his transition. When Queen Krull told him that, that he would die within a few days, he told her that he was better off dead than living as a monster. However, she decided to slice herself and allowed her juice to flow into a cup. But when she gave it to him, he threw it away. However, when she began to leave, he caught her hand and began to suck all her juice. In the present, while the team were heading for their new destination, Shinoa told the boys that they had no chance at surviving the front lines of the war, as the high-ranked vampires could annihilate them in a heartbeat. When Kimizuki wondered if there was a way to level up their abilities, Shinoa showed them some performance enhancing and told them that it would help them to utilize the full abilities of their demons. Kairu asked if the pills would make him as powerful as the high-ranked vampires, so Shinoa told him that one pill would double his strength, while two pills would triple his strength. Shocked by her words, Kairu wondered how powerful he would be if he took ten pills, so Shinoa told him that his organs would spill out of him like chewing gums, and that two pills would cause him to have a severe shock. Mitsuba told them that the pills could only power them for 15 minutes, and that once the effects had worn off, they would be dinner for the vampires. When Shinoa gave them the pills, Kairu asked her why she had not given them earlier when they came across the high-ranked vampire. So Shinoa told him that they would have gotten their ass kicked immediately, since the pills would only become active after 10 seconds. Suddenly, a missile hit the ground, and as the truck lost its balance, it stumbled and sent the team flying out. As the helicopter circled, the team began to run from the relentless shots. However, when it tried to circle again, Kairu realized that the corporal was unconscious, so he hurried to pull him out while Shinoa supported him. But when the aircraft began firing more shots at them, Mitsuba and Kimizuki blocked them with their weapons. As Yochi fired an arrow at the aircraft, it launched missiles towards them before exploding. But as a missile hit the truck, it caused an explosion that erupted the ground and sent the team falling into somewhere underground. As Kairu and Shinoa looked around them, they discovered that they had fallen into an abandoned subway. Shinoa told Kairu that there was an army base nearby, and that they could take the corporal to the site for treatment. However, when they realized that the other half of the team was on the other side of the rubble, Kairu told them to head for the defense line while they took the corporal to a safe facility. So Kairu carried him on his back, and they began to head down the tunnel. On the east side, Gurren and Mika came across each other, and as Gurren readied himself for a fight, Lord Farid appeared behind Mika with an army of vampires. So Gurren summoned his own army for support, and began to draw the power of his sword. At the same time, Kairu and Shinoa had arrived at the army base to admit the corporal for treatment. But as they began to leave, Shinoa told Kairu that Gurren was awaiting them at the east side of the district, so that they would aid in holding off the vampires. So she suggested that they reunite with the rest of the team before heading to the east side. At that moment, they found a soldier who was telling his superior that the vampires were destroying a nearby district, and that they had nearly forced their way through the defense line. When Kairu discovered that only his friends were fighting off the vampires in that district, he told the superior that he would take care of business. As he began to leave, Shinoa told him that they had run out of time and were better off supporting Gurren in his district. But Kairu ignored her and continued walking away. Before long, he began to run so she followed him. Meanwhile at the district, as Mitsuba cut down a vampire, Yoichi launched an arrow at another. When one tried sneaking up, Yoichi jumped away and Kimizuki blocked his blade before impaling his heart. Realizing they were outnumbered, they waited for the vampire's attack, but as Kimizuki clashed swords with one, another tried ending him. 
Luckily, Kairu protected him and Shinoa cut him with a slash. With the vampires eliminated, Kairu wondered where the rest of the vampire army were hiding, so Kimizuki told him that they had slain them all. When he asked Kairu why they had appeared at the district instead of the defense line, Kairu told him that he had come to rescue them after learning they were in trouble. Meanwhile on the east side, Gurren swung his sword, obliterating the vampires before him, as both groups went into battle. When a vampire charged towards Gurren, he blocked his sword and backed into Yuri. Realizing they had no chance at winning, she suggested that Gurren eliminated Lord Farid, so that they would have an advantage. At the same time, Lord Farid told Mika to eliminate him. So as Gurren charged towards them, Mika stepped up for the challenge and summoned the power of his sword. As another battle raged on, Gurren jumped towards Mika, and they began clashing swords before jumping away. With a flash, Gurren stuck a spell on Mika's head and commanded it to explode. But when the dust cleared, Mika landed on the ground and was unscathed by the attack. However, the demon army caught him in their trap. And at Gurren's command, Yuri pulled her strings, hoping to trap Mika, but he jumped away. So Mido cast a powerful smoke towards him, but as he dodged it and landed, he realized that Gurren was behind him. As he tried to end him, Lord Farid blocked his blade and punched him far away, causing him to stumble through several rubbles before coming to a stop. When Farid suggested that they eliminate Gurren, Mika told him that he did not need his help and would handle the battle on his own. On the other hand, Gurren discovered that he had only a few seconds left before losing the effects of the pill. When he tried taking another, Mido warned him that it would be the end of him. However, Gurren thought they were all going to die anyway, but hoped to take some high-ranking vampires with him. As Mika flashed towards him, he promised to end him, but they jumped away from each other. Before long, Mika lunged again, pushing him towards the rubble and was ready to slay him. However, Kairu and the team appeared in the distance and began running towards them. At Shinoa's command, they each swallowed a pill, hoping to rescue Gurren and retreat from the battle. As Mika impaled Gurren, Kairu came rushing towards him. But at the realization that he was Kairu, Mika froze up in shock, allowing Kairu to stab him deep into the heart. As they stared at each other in shock, Gurren told Kairu to activate the curse on his sword and eliminate Mika. But with Kairu too shaken up to do so, Gurren tried to end Mika, but he jumped high and went rolling over the ground. As Kairu was stuttering for words, Gurren punched his face and demanded to know why he had failed to end Mika, but Kairu was still in a daze. When Gurren began to cough from his injuries, Kairu tried to help him, but he pushed him aside and screamed at him to wake up from his useless moronic dreams. When the team met him, Mitsuba wondered why he had failed to eliminate the vampire, so he told them that the vampire was his friend Mika, whom he believed was long dead. As Kairu and Mika began to walk closer, overwhelmed by the sight of each other, Lord Farid told Mika that the humans were manipulating Kairu. Hoping to save him, Mika told Farid that he would take Kairu far away from the district. However, when Farid threatened to turn Kairu into a vampire, Mika grew angry and held him, telling him that he would eliminate him if he tried. So Farid accepted, and told him that he would eliminate Kairu's team instead. As magical ropes bound Mika's hand, power coursed through his sword, and a new vampire Crowley began approaching them. The team recognized him as the high-ranking vampire they had earlier came across, and were immediately afraid for themselves. Realizing they could not defeat them, Gurren screamed for the team to retreat immediately, but Kairu was reluctant to leave Mika. However, the team managed to persuade him, so they started running away. But Farid ran before them and stood in their way, saying they were not allowed to leave. However, when he swooshed in behind Kairu, he drew his sword and began to attack him like a mindless brain-dead buffoon. As he slashed desperately at him, eager to avenge the death of his friends, Gurren immediately joined him. So as Farid continued backing away, Gurren rushed towards him, but Farid escaped his strike and appeared behind him before kicking him into a pole. When Mido tried running to his rescue, another vampire kicked Yuri aside and sprinted to her front before casting a wind and slashing her face. At the same time, the team began to fight more vampires. As Yoichi ended one with an arrow, he narrowly dodged the second. When he tried aiming again, he froze up in fear, but Kimizuki pushed him aside and blocked the vampire's blade before cutting him down. As Farid held Guren against the wall, Kairu came charging to the rescue, but nearly cut Guren with his own sword. Farid appeared behind him, but as he threatened to devour him, his arm was severed from Mika's slash, so he retreated and merely caught his arm again. Mika began approaching Kairu, but he sat down in fear of him. Mika told him that they had to run away, but Kairu wondered why he was hanging out with the vampire that killed their friends. Ignoring his question, Mika picked him up like a baby and flew away from the scene. As he jumped off, Kairu demanded to know why he had joined forces with the vampire. 
However, Mika thought the humans were too dangerous and evil and told him to stay away from them forever. As he continued jumping off, Kairu pushed him away and claimed his freedom. When Mika approached Kairu again, he told him that the humans intend to destroy the world and offered to take him to a safe spot. However, Kairu turned him down and said that his team was important. At the same time, Crowley was about to end Shinoa, but as Kairu tried to save her, Mika held him and told him that he must abandon his team. Before his eyes, the vampires restrained all his friends, but Mika held his cloak to stop him from saving them. When he broke free and tried running off, Mika caught him and told him that the humans were merely using him for his abilities. At that moment, Kairu watched as the vampires began to suck his friend's juice. Desperate to stop them, Kairu flipped Mika to the floor, but as he realized he was too late, he began to scream like he was in a terrible pain as his eye dripped with tomato sauce. Inside his spirit world, he wondered if Asuramaru was trying to take control of his body, but she told him that there was a monster inside of him that was trying to unleash its power. As they looked towards the unfamiliar sky, mysterious trumpets resounded across this world, and angels appeared in the sky. Asuramaru told Kairu that the monster within him was about to be unleashed, and instantly, a powerful darkness shot out of Kairu's back and continued stretching forth like a mighty tree branch while he screamed in pain. Mika tried talking Kairu back to his senses, but he cast a slash that destroyed the roof and vanquished everything in sight. Crowley decided to approach Kairu, but narrowly dodged a mighty blast that carved a large hole into the ground. As he wondered how Kairu became so powerful, he appeared behind him, but he managed to block his sword and crashed far off into a building. But as he landed, Kairu tackled him and began dragging him through the ground before evading his sword. Crowley rushed towards him, and they began clashing swords before he was kicked away. Kairu slashed towards him, and a mountain of darkness rose to the sky, destroying the ground before him. When Shinoa woke up, she discovered that a great hole had been carved into the ground from the destruction. Before long, Kairu appeared and started walking towards Shinoa like a brain-dead zombie. Hoping to defend herself, she summoned her weapon, but Kairu smacked it away. As he chased her, ready to end her useless existence, Mika took the blow in her place. With the sword moving closer to her, Guren screamed for her to call Mika back to his senses. So she ran towards him and held him tightly, telling him to remember his identity. As he began to scream like a crazy maniac, he released Mika and tried ending Shinoa, but the darkness returned into him and passed out as his mind was restored. At the same time, Guren told Farid that Kairu was merely a distraction from their real attack. At the distance, a soldier aimed a gun towards the vampires, and as he fired, three monsters appeared in the flame and crashed into the ground. With Farid believing they were safe, an army appeared before them, and the leader told them that they were from the Hiragi family, and that they intended to capture all the vampires. A few days later, Shinoa entered into a secret facility, but a security told her that she was not allowed into the restricted area, and told her to leave immediately. When she told them that she was from the extermination unit, the security told her that only superior officers were allowed to go through the gates. She wondered what the facility was used for, so another security told her that it was used as a lab for experimenting on vampires. Looking to discover for herself, Shinoa showed them her crest, revealing that she was a member of the Hiragi family, so they finally let her into the facility. As she walked through a dreary passage, she discovered that some vampires were locked up in the cells. Before long, she arrived at a huge lab and discovered that scientists were performing weird experiments with the vampire's juice and realized that it must have triggered the war in the first place. As she entered Guren's office, she told him that Kairu has been unconscious since the battle and wondered what was inside the pill she had given to him. Guren told her that Kairu was merely a lab rat to be used in exterminating the vampires and since he was of no more use to them, he was not concerned about his survival. Having said these words, he told her to leave immediately. But as she began to leave, he told her that the effects of the pills would wear off in a week. Later that day, as Shinoa sat beside Kairu's bed, she hoped that he would wake up soon. A few days ago during the battle, Farid had told Mika to retreat with the rest of their group. But he had refused and told him that he would not leave without Kairu. However, after spotting Kairu buried in the warmth of Shinoa's plot, Farid restrained Mika and told him that Queen Krull was awaiting him at the castle. In the vampire world, Mika woke up inside a detoxification system, and as he put on his clothes, he ignored the other vampires around him. One vampire wondered why Kairu had transformed into a monster, so the second told him that the Hiragi family had tested a forbidden magic on him, without realizing that they could destroy the world. 
he said that the purpose of the war was to destroy the machine that creates the pills. However, he was not certain that they were able to fulfill their purpose. Ignoring them, Mika began to leave. But the vampire thought he was mysterious and wondered who he really was. Mika told him that his past was irrelevant, and as he remembered the shocking look on Kairu's face, he told them that he was another filthy ugly horrendous vampire whose future was already dead. Meanwhile, Kairu finally woke up and Yoichi was happy to see him again, before hurrying to call on to the others. Before long, Shinoa appeared in the door and was glad to see him alive. Kairu told her that he has no memories of the war's outcome, so she told him that a new army had arrived to save the day and were able to eliminate several vampires. Kairu wondered if Mika was captured by the army, so she told him that he had escaped to the vampire world. After realizing she looked sick, Kairu checked her wound, wondering if she would become a vampire. But Mitsuba entered the room, and as she spotted them, she thought they were going to kiss. However, Shinoa fell from her seat in shock, so Kairu told Mitsuba that he was merely checking her health status. Shortly, the team gathered before him, so Kairu thanked them for saving his sleeping ass and told them that he was glad to see them alive. After they left, Kairu decided to stare out the window and hoped to see Mika again. A few weeks later, while Kairu was reading in a library, Shinoa appeared before his eyes and began to look through his book. After realizing what he intended to do, she gave it back, but as she began to leave, she decided to ask him why he was looking to turn Mika into a human. However, he merely ignored her. As she tried persuading him, a speaker announced that Kairu was being summoned to the headquarters, so Shinoa told him that the Hiragi family were the ones waiting to meet him. As he began to leave, he realized that Shinoa was also a member of the Hiragi family, but she thought he was a moron for not discovering it sooner. She told him that the Hiragi family were a weird group of psychopaths and warned him to be cautious of his actions around them. As he left the facility, he came across Guren who told him that the Hiragi family would make him join their army, but told him to turn down their offer. By the time Kairu arrived at the Hiragi facility, he met Mitsuba as she was heading out. When he wondered why she was summoned, she told him that she had been called in for questioning and had been promoted for fighting off the vampires. However, she thought she was a liability on the battlefield and told him that she did not deserve to be promoted, but he told her not to feel sad and said that she deserved the promotion for her hard work. With Kairu set to leave, she told him that the Hiragi family were taking him for a spy and said that they were a bunch of nutcases who would make him confess to being the son of the devil. After a few minutes, Kairu arrived inside a hall, and as the door mysteriously closed, a spotlight revealed the vampire before him. Thirsty for his juice, the vampire lunged towards him, but as he struck the floor, Kairu bounced off a pole, and rushing towards him, he sliced him with a single slash, obliterating him in that instant. Shortly, he realized that the Hiragi family were standing before him. The leader Kirito told him that the vampire was a trap to test his loyalty to the family, and that he would have been considered an enemy if he had failed to eliminate him. To further test his loyalty, Kirito decided to challenge him to a duel, and warned him not to activate the curse of his blade. Taking it for an easy fight, Kairu agreed and promised to kick his ass. However, Kirito summoned the power of his own sword, and cast a slash that wrecked the floor and sent Kairu flying into the wall. Immediately, Kirito appeared before him, calling him the most useless soldier he had ever met, and wondered how he managed to defeat the vampires. Angered by his words, Kairu tried slashing him down, but a soldier blocked his sword. So Kirito told his brother Shinya to challenge Kairu to another duel as he was impressed by his bravery. While Kairu readied himself, Shinya summoned his weapon and blasted towards him, but nothing emerged. With Kairu confused, a beast appeared from the side, but he slashed it away. When Shinya almost had him, Kairu smacked his gun but was swept to the floor. With his sorry ass defeated, Shinya told him that he was still a useless fighter, but wondered why Guren had not trained him in using his special weapon. Kairu wondered why he was being tested, so Shinya told him that they were trying to discover the spy who was hiding within the facility. As they arrived in a new room, Kairu discovered that Kimizuku and Yoichi had been captured. Angered by this realization, he demanded for their release, but Kirito told him that they would only be released if he admitted the truth. He told him that his past was hidden, but wondered how his team were able to acquire their special weapons. As Kairu stuttered for an answer, Kirito commanded a soldier to torture Kimizuki and Yoichi. With Kairu desperate to save them, Kirito demanded to know why he was hanging out with Guren, and wondered why he bore the name of a powerful family. Kairu told him that his name was from an orphanage, and that Guren had rescued him after he escaped from the vampire world. 
Kirito told him that the orphanage had used him as their lab rat, as they were known for experimenting on orphans. With Kairu looking clueless, Kirito told him that Guren was trying to unleash his hidden abilities, but wanted him to join his own army. However, Kairu was not impressed by his offer and thought that Kirito was a schmuck. So he told him to release Kimizuki and Yoichi, and as they were freed, both of them collapsed from exhaustion. Before long, they began walking out of the facility, with Kairu serving as support for Yoichi. As Mitsuba ran towards them, she wondered if they were hit by a bus. But before he could answer, Kairu spotted Gurren and immediately ran to him, asking him why he was being used as a plaything. Gurren told him that he discovered his hidden abilities and intended to explore it whichever way that he could. So Kairu promised that he would continue to be his plaything if he helped him rescue Mika from the vampires and taught him how to use his special sword. Meanwhile in the vampire world, Mika was groaning from a powerful thirst for juice. When Lord Ferret appeared before him, he grabbed a little boy and told Mika to drink all his juice so that his suffering would end. As Mika watched him squeeze the life out of him, he rushed to Ferret and told him to release the boy. But when Farid left, Mika fell to the side and started groaning again. A few weeks later in the city, Shinoa told Kairu and Kimizuki that the only way to harness their full abilities was by cutting themselves with their weapons and summoning their demon to drink their juice. At that moment, Yoichi told them that a few monsters were approaching them. As he drew his bow, a dark spirit appeared behind him, and as he launched his arrow, it dispersed in the air and began eliminating all the monsters. Shocked by the sight, Kimizuki and Kairu wondered how he was able to unleash his full abilities. So Yoichi told them that he had developed a unique bond with his demon. Desperate to unleash his own abilities, Kairu pulled his sword and cut himself as he summoned his demon. In that instant, his eyes began to turn, so the team drew their weapons, ready for a battle. But he merely passed out on the ground. Realizing he would remain unconscious for a few hours, Shinoa suggested that they hide him in a safe spot until he was awake. As Kairu began to scream, they immediately restrained him, hoping he would defeat his demon. Inside Kairu's spirit world, he found his father, who was trying to end him for being too powerful. And as he grew afraid, he decided to run away, but soon discovered that his friends had been slain before him. While he was still in shock, his father stabbed him from behind, spilling his tomato sauce and telling him that he was responsible for the death of his friends. However, Kairu would not surrender, and as he woke up in another world, he told Asuramaru that he would never allow her to take control over his body. Looking to defeat him, she began rushing towards him, but he threw his sword and told her that he has no intentions of fighting with her. With Asuramaru in shock, Kairu told her that he wishes to rescue Mika, and promised to be her friend in exchange for her powers. In that moment, he woke up in the real world, and told the team that he had acquired his demon's full abilities. By the following night, Kimizuki began screaming as he faced off with his own demon. Inside his spirit world, he flew to slay his demon, but she blocked his blade, calling him a useless weakling. And as she caught another sword, she impaled his heart. However, he was determined to defeat her, so he grabbed his own blade and slayed her with a slash. As he woke up in the real world, Kimizuki struck Kairu with his sword, causing the team to jump away immediately. However, he told them that he merely intended to test Kairu's abilities, and as he appeared before him, he challenged Kairu to a duel. Looking to prove himself, Kairu summoned the power of his sword, and several other swords appeared behind him with a flaming aura. As he started running towards him, the swords launched forward but Kimizuki managed to block them off until a car exploded. In retaliation, Kimizuki decided to unleash his own abilities and summon the Devil's Coffin. But Kairu swiftly retreated, realizing he would be vanquished by the demon that was inside it. The following day, the boys arrived at the girls' dorm for breakfast, but they soon discovered that the girls had burned the omelette. So Kimizuki stepped up and decided to make a new omelette like a pro. As they started having breakfast, she was worried that Guren intended to cast them into a war with the Hiragi family, and was convinced that he was up to no good. With the team shocked by her words, she wondered if they were better off abandoning Guren or staying with him as his puppets. That afternoon on the roof, Kairu decided to apologize to Shinoa for attacking her during the battle. He told her that he has no memories of the event, but hoped that she would stay by his side forever. Later that evening, Kairu told the team that he was willing to remain with Guren since he rescued him all those years ago, as he considered it his duty to repay him for his kindness. However, he was bent on finding Mika so that he would uncover the hidden secrets in the vampire world. Realizing his mind was already made up, the team decided to support him and agreed to stay with Guren. Meanwhile in the vampire world, Mika burst into Queen Kroll's palace, desperate and ravaged by hunger, and as he grabbed her, he began to suck all her juice. 
When he was done, he pushed her off as he was shocked by his own action. However, he decided to ask her why the vampire lords were intending to capture Kairu, but she told him that it was none of his business. Angered by her words, he tried to smack her, but she caught his hand and told him that he was merely her puppet whom she could destroy whenever she wanted. She told him that the vampire world would be waging another war on the humans and commanded him to rescue Kairu before the war began, so Mika accepted to keep him safe. After a few days, the team began traveling to a new facility and soon came across hungry monsters that were waiting to have them for breakfast. As Kimizuki maneuvered his way through, Mitsuba summoned her weapon and unleashed a blast that split the monster before her, while Yoichi ended two other monsters. With new monsters ahead, Kairu began charging towards them and slayed both monsters in his way. But as he jumped high towards the vehicle, Kimizuki swerved to the other side, causing him to land on the ground. The girls began to wave him off as they drove away, but after a few hours, they continued their travels to the facility. By the time they arrived, they discovered that they were already late, so they tried sneaking in unnoticed. However, Guren spotted them, and called them a bunch of useless morons who could not pour piss out of a boot. So Kairu decided to step forward, and told Guren that he was responsible for delaying the team. Guren asked if he would quit the army as a punishment, but Kairu told him that he was willing to join the war against the vampires. Guren began to tell the soldiers that their mission for the war was to eliminate all the high-ranking vampires in their city. He told them that it was an impossible mission, but was willing to make them sacrificial lambs. After the soldiers were dispersed, Shinoa decided to thank Kairu for taking the fault for the team, but he told her that he enjoys being the useless scapegoat. At that moment, Shigure appeared before them and summoned Kairu into the old facility. As they arrived, Kairu found Gurin and a few other soldiers standing before him. When he demanded to know why he was summoned, Gurin told him that he was pleased with him for taking the blame for his team and thought he was deserving of a fitting reward. So he summoned Mido and puffed a smoke that spread across the room, causing him to scream. At the sound of his noise, the team hurried into the facility. When they found Kairu struggling over a flame, Shinoa tried slashing the rope but he vanished before her eyes. Realizing it was an illusion, she wondered why Guren had decided to trick them. So Guren told her that it was her punishment for not taking responsibility for the team's fault. He told her that since they were heading into a fierce war, she could lose her entire team if she made a wrong decision. However, Shinoa told him that she was a great leader and could protect her team from any threat. So Guren decided to challenge the team to a battle, hoping they can prove their abilities to him. Before long, Shinoa started suggesting a plan on defeating Guren, and told Kairu that he could only be outdone in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Meanwhile, all three of them appeared from above and were ready for battle. As Shinya summoned his weapon and fired, a monster appeared in the flame, but dodged Yoich's arrows and went crashing through the hall, nearly destroying the team. With their plans out the window, Shinoa told the team to retreat, so Mitsuba cast a flame as a diversion, but Guren destroyed it with his sword. While they were running off, Shinya blasted two monsters towards them, but Yoichi managed to destroy them. When Gurin rushed towards Kimizuki and Kairu, they began clashing swords, as Gurin danced with quick graceful moves. At the same time, Shinoa and Mitsuba ran towards Maido, and began swinging and cutting with their blades. So Gurin cast a mighty wind that blasted the team out of the facility. But as Kairu landed on a car, he narrowly dodged a powerful strike that split the car in half. As they battled again, Gurin stuck an explosive spell on Kairu's head and threatened to blow up his skull. So Kairu started running towards him, hoping they would blow up together, but Shinya fired a blast that he managed to vanquish. But as it blew in his face, Gurin knocked Mitsuba unconscious and smacked off Shinoa's weapon. He told her that her team was an ugly group of losers who stood no chance against any high-ranking vampire. Meanwhile in a faraway town, Mika watched as a new set of children were led into aircrafts. With Mika resisting his thirst, a vampire told him to accept who he was and to drink as much body paint as he desires, but Mika turned down his offer. However, when he was out of sight, he staggered from exhaustion. So he started drinking some of Krull's reserve juice, but threw it down when it was no longer quenching his thirst. Before his eyes, the vampires began leading the last set of kids towards the aircraft and Mika realized that it was his final chance to taste their blood. Desperate for a sip, he flew towards the girl and pressed her to the ground, ready to devour her. But as he regained his senses, the kids immediately ran off in fear. By the next day, Iwasaki began to explain their plans to eliminate a high-ranking vampire. He told them that the vampire would be at the usual park, and that they would have to ambush him before he rejoined the other high-ranking vampires. Realizing that Kairu may screw them over, Narumi's team began to call him a useless deadweight who had no place in the battle. 
However, Shinoa was determined to redeem her team, so she promised that they would succeed in the mission. At the same time, Shinya and Yoichi were waiting on a tower so that they would support Shinoa's team in eliminating the vampires. But when Yoichi began to look like he had seen a ghost, Shinya told him to have some faith in himself and to stop believing that he was a hopeless horrendous failure. So Yoichi took a deep breath and managed to relax himself before drawing his bow and looking for the noble vampire. Before long, they spotted him several miles away and began to wait for their moment. Inside the park, while the vampire was having his special cocktail, he sensed the threat and pulled his butler into the incoming blasts. When the dust cleared, he was unscathed, so he slashed a powerful force towards the tower, splitting it in half instantly. At the same time, the squad began to run towards the vampire, so Kairu offered to take on the vampire and to test his total strength. As two vampires ran towards him, Yoich's arrows consumed them and consumed several others, allowing Kairu to face off with the noble vampire. As Kairu charged with his sword, the vampire evaded with ease and blocked his sword before hurling him back and dodging a blade. Shinoa tried to end him, but he caught her side, and as Iwasaki flew to end him, he tossed her towards him, but Kairu prevented a disaster. As the vampire slipped behind Kairu, Shinoa summoned flaming monsters to attack him, but he cut them off like trash and blew Kairu with a wind. Kimizuki ran towards him, and they clashed swords with sleek movements until his blade went flying in the air. Before he could end him, the vampire was impaled with blades, and Iwasaki unleashed the power of his sword to bind his arm and restrain him. But before they could eliminate him, he sliced off his member and vanished instantly. With the teams ready to attack again, Kimizuki suggested that they lure him into a trap. So he began to tease the vampire, and wondered if he could grow a new member. As he stabbed the arm, it began to vanish, so the vampire grew angry and flashed towards him. Instantly, Mitsuba unleashed a flame, but he vanquished it and discovered that Shinya and Yoichi were standing before him. As they blasted him, stopping him in his tracks, Kairu flew towards him with a mighty slash, causing him to drop to his knees from a gashing wound. Realizing their opportunity, Endo flew to end him, but he caught her sword, and as he threw her off, he sekai'd himself in that instant and got obliterated before their eyes. With the vampire defeated, Mitsuba told the teams that they could defeat the other nobles if they continued working together. At the same time, Gurin was battling another noble vampire, and after carving a gaping wound into his heart, he vanquished him with a single slash. By the time his team arrived, he told them that they must join the remaining forces immediately. But at that moment, a wounded soldier appeared before them. With his last breath, he told them that the other nobles had eliminated his squad and had taken the survivors as their new juice maker. Mido told Guren that the vampires were trying to lead them into a trap, so Guren told her that they would reunite with the other teams and head on to eliminate Crowley. Later that day, Kairu and the other soldiers began to wait for the remaining teams. But after one new team arrived, they realized that the other teams may have all been slain. The leader, Ehara, told Narumi that they barely survived their battle, and she wondered how they returned from their own battle unscathed, since they had faced another high-ranking vampire. So Narumi told her that Kairu and his team had saved them all from extermination. Shortly, Gurin arrived at the park, and was pleased to discover that a few nobles were successfully slain. After realizing that Ehara's team were too exhausted to continue in the war, he told them to remain at the park until a new squad arrived to take their place. Having said these words, he told them that a few teams were slain, and that their new mission was to rescue the survivors that were captured by the vampires. Later that day, Gurin and the other team started heading out to a new destination, as they intended to eliminate another noble vampire. Meanwhile at the park, a new squad eventually arrived. When Ehara spotted them, she was delighted that they could finally switch places. However, she soon discovered that vampire aircrafts had trailed them to the park. Desperate to save the squads, she fired an arrow and destroyed one aircraft. But two vampires jumped out of the second and more vampires surrounded them. Realizing their annihilation was close, Ehara tried shooting the vampires, but Mika appeared behind her and as he caught her throat, he took her down instantly. With no means of escaping, Ehara told the squads to end themselves. So they began chewing on candy and dropping like flies, but before Ehara could end herself, Mika searched her mouth and stole her sweet. He told her that he was willing to let her live if she would tell him where to find Kairu. However, another vampire saw them, and wondered if he intended to make her his sushi, but Mika told him that she was already dead. When they discovered that a few nobles had been slain, they suggested warning Lord Crowley immediately. But Ehara held a knife to Mika's throat, and threatened to end him if they made contact. However, she began to back away, 
and told him that Kairu was heading for Lord Crowley's castle, but she was afraid that he would be eliminated alongside the squad. Suddenly, Mika smacked off the weapon and squeezed her hand, causing her to scream in pain. So he kicked and stamped on her, telling her to confess the whereabouts of the remaining squad. She told them that they were heading for a faraway garden, and that they intended to attack the noble lord of that district. At this discovery, the other vampires decided to head for the garden so that they would inform the noble beforehand. But as Mika began to leave, Ehara asked him to put her out of her misery, but he told her to do it herself. One of the vampires told him to carry her along with them so that they would show her to the nobles. Hearing these words, Ehara drew her bow and was ready to end them all, but as she released it, she missed her aim and Mika slayed her with a single slash of his sword. Disappointed by the outcome, the other vampires began to leave. Mika told them that he wishes to stay behind, and that he intends to visit Lord Crowley's castle with a few low-ranking vampires. Meanwhile, Gurin and the squad had arrived on a rooftop. But after spotting the hostages, he realized that they were being lured into a trap. He told them that their priority was to stay alive until the backup forces joined their squad for the next mission and that they were meant to serve as a mere distraction. As the teams dispersed, Yoichi spotted Crowley at his window. With a chance to end him, he unleashed a beast at his window that caused an explosion and carved a large hole into the wall. However, Crowley was unscathed and merely hurled the monster away. At this realization, Gurren wondered if their plans to free the soldiers would be successful. When Shinya suggested that they abandon the hostages and run away for their lives, Kairu told him that he would not leave until the soldiers were all freed. So after a few minutes, the squad separated into two teams and were ready for their new mission. While they were waiting for the signal, an explosion rocked the building before them. At the same time, Gurren cut a vampire and slashed another, while Mido destroyed one with a punch and Yuri vanquished two of them. But as more vampires ran towards them, Goshi began to release a smoke that caused an illusion and created a hundred other soldiers. With the vampires enchanted by this illusion, Gurren and his team ran through, while Narumi began to free the soldiers. As Gurren flew towards Crowley, looking to distract him from the hostages, Crowley knocked back his sword. So Gurren hurled curse explosives that blew up in his face, but he caught his hand, and as Shinya appeared before him, he threw Gurren into him, crashing both of them inside. With their commanders trapped in the building, Kairu suggested that they rescue them, so the others agreed. Inside the building, while Gurren and Shinya were trying to recover from the crash, Crowley appeared before them. He commended their bravery, but promised to squash them like bugs. Before long, Gurren began attacking him with relentless strikes, but Crowley easily read his movements. When Shinya tried blasting him, a lady smacked him with her whip, but Gurren would not relent, so he flew high to slay him, but he merely pushed him off. Determined to annihilate him, Gurren summoned the power of his sword while Shinya fired at him, but he slashed both of their attacks and burned Shinya with a flame. Luckily, they managed to escape, and as they ran down a hall, Crowley ran to make them fall, so Shinya launched a few blasts, but he slayed it and dodged the last. As they began hurrying down a passage, Crowley broke through the wall before them and struck Gurren's sword. When he tried attacking, the vampire impaled him and called him his puppet. As he pulled out his sword, he seized him, saying that he intends to keep him as his doll. All of a sudden, Kairu broke through the ground looking to end him, but he merely blocked and tried to finish him off. Luckily, Kimizuki saved him, allowing Yoichi to fire arrows, while Mitsuba unleashed a flame around him. But when Kairu tried to end him, he put Gurin in his way, causing him to stop. However, Kairu would not surrender, so he summoned his flaming swords and launched them, but they were knocked away by the ladies. As Kairu charged forward, he blocked a strike, but was caught in a whip and immediately pulled up. When they tried to end him, Shinoa protected him, but were both thrown to the floor. Realizing they were hopeless, Shinoa suggested they run away. So Yoichi launched arrows at them, while Mitsuba cast a powerful flame, but they vanquished it instantly. Desperate to save Gurin, Kairu tried challenging them, but Kimizuki restrained him. However, Crowley was looking to provoke them, so he flung him into the wall. When Kairu tried rescuing him once more, Shinya stopped him and told him that they had to escape immediately. However, Kairu would not listen and began running, but was restrained yet again, so Shinya seized him, and they all started running away. Hoping to capture Kairu, the vampires tried running after them, but a flame appeared before their eyes, and they realized that they were trapped inside a magical illusion. As Crowley dodged Kunai's, he smacked off Goshi, and easily evaded Mido's onslaught before grabbing her leg and flinging her into Shigir. Realizing they were hopeless, Gurren told his team to abandon him, but Yuri told him that she wants to stay by his side forever. As Crowley began to kick Gurren, he screamed for them to run away since he could never be rescued. 
However, Goshi decided to try a final trick. As he struck the ground, lava began pouring in. But having seen enough, Crowley unleashed a mighty slash that destroyed the walls and broke the illusion. As the team arrived in an abandoned site, Shinya threw Kairu to the floor, angered by his reckless behavior at the castle. However, Kairu didn't know when to stop, and began to demand that they rescue Guren immediately. But Shinoa told him that they had to continue with their mission, as it was their only hope of winning the war. At that moment, Guren's team arrived, so Shinya told them that they must rejoin the other squads within a few hours and continue on to their next mission. But Kairu told them that his only mission was to rescue Guren. As he staggered off, broken and betrayed, he decided to tell them his story. After he escaped from the vampire world, Guren had found him and had taken care of him like a family. He had told him that he considered him special, and wants him to channel his anger into slaying the vampires. Kairu told the squad that he could never abandon Guren. As he took out his pills, Shinoa soon realized what he intended to do. When she tried snatching it, Kairu kept it out of her reach and swallowed two of them. Shinoa told him that the pills would end him, and Mitsuba tried forcing him to vomit it, but Kairu refused and told them that he was determined to become powerful. Before long, he began to cough up tomato sauce, so Shinya commanded the teams to back away. When the boys tried restraining him, he tossed them aside, and as he began to scream, he passed out on the floor. Meanwhile, Mika and a few vampires had arrived at Crowley's castle. After sensing a human presence, Mika impaled the vampire before him, looking to keep Kairu's whereabouts away from them. When the others surrounded him, he slayed one and destroyed the others, causing the ground to erupt around him. Inside the spirit world, Kairu began to ask Asuramaru for her powers, telling her that he needs to save Guren and that he was willing to trade his soul for the devil. However, Asuramaru told him that the pills were too powerful, and that her additional powers would cause him to explode. But even then, Kairu didn't care about any of that, and continued begging for her powers. Having had enough, she decided to tell him that he was already dead, and had no more use for her powers. When Kairu wondered if he was in the afterlife, she told him that he was still in his spirit world, and that the angels were determined to keep him alive. Hearing a sound, Kairu looked back and saw a fallen trumpet. Desperate for power, he began to crawl towards it, but she stopped him. She told him that the trumpet was evil, and that it could take control of his mind. But Kairu was bent on attaining power, so he began to approach it, enchanted by its sight. As he tried to touch it, she caught his hand, and impaled his heart for being too stubborn. However, Kairu remained determined, and screamed at her to give him her powers. So she told him that she would grant him special abilities for a few minutes, but would afterwards take possession of his body. Immediately, Kairu woke up in the real world. After spotting his friends all around him, he told them that he was going to save Guren. So he flew out the window, and began rushing through the street before jumping into the castle. As he broke through a window, he darted towards Guren, but Crowley stopped him in his tracks, and wondered how he became powerful again. Kairu told him that he had returned to eliminate him, and began a raging onslaught, before jumping away, and summoning his flaming swords. To even the battle, Crowley drew power from his weapon, and cast a wind at him. But as he came flying, he blocked and knocked him away before punching him into the wall. However, Kairu rushed again, and Crowley smacked his sword away, but Guren appeared before he could end him. He told Kairu to run away, but the moron didn't know when to stop. As he wondered why he could not defeat Crowley after receiving Asuramaru's power, Crowley told him that humans were merely their juice maker, and that the vampires would continue to be the kings of the world. Angered by his words, Kairu flew at him, and began another onslaught like an out-of-control maniac. But Crowley kicked him aside, and the ladies restrained Guren. He screamed for Kairu to run away, but the moron had a death wish, and was bent on fighting until the end. As he attacked Crowley once more, he punched him away. Realizing he was hopeless, Kairu summoned Asuramaru for more powers, and his mystical drawings stretched across his body, a horn appeared on his head. But a coffin appeared before his eyes, and he saw two glowing eyes inside. As Kimizuki jumped into the hall, he realized that Kairu was becoming a demon. So he rushed towards him, and after grabbing him, he threw him towards the coffin where a monster swallowed him. At that instant, a hole opened in the ground, and two monsters emerged to distract them. With Kairu rescued once more, the team started running off to their next destination. Meanwhile in the city, Mika discovered that the vampire army were heading towards Lord Crowley's castle, and he wondered if he would ever see Kairu again. But just then, he spotted the squad running towards him, and saw Kairu in their midst. When Shinya saw Mika, he told his squad to annihilate him before other vampires discovered their whereabouts. Mika began to approach them, and as he summoned power into his sword, he charged forward. 
As he slashed his sword, Narumi shielded the blast, but Mika slashed and darted through the soldiers before flying through the air and slaying his way through the forces like a man on a mission. Before long, he found himself in a thick smoke, and Goshi began to cast an illusion spell, causing him to start melting. However, Mika managed to force his way through, and as he jumped into the air, Yuri decided to stop him, but he broke her sword and was impaled with kunais before getting kicked to the ground. As the soldiers rushed to end him, he spotted Kairu and was revived. So he slayed a group, and began to slaughter the others with a raging relentless onslaught like a demon out of hell. As he became weak and dizzy, they began to cut him, but he continued, determined to make it to the other side. However, Mitsuba appeared before his eyes, but he struck her blade and knocked her aside. As Shinoa blocked his sword, she tried to tell him that they were Kairu's friends, but he shoved her aside and locked hands with Kimizuki before ramming into his head. With Kimizuki passed out, he tried carrying Kairu, but Yoichi stopped him and told him that they care about him like his family. But Mika pushed him away. Suddenly, Shinya stabbed him from behind and was ready to end him. But a monster knocked him aside from Shinoa's side. When Shinoa told Mika to carry Kairu to a safe spot, the soldiers prepared to attack them. But she stopped them with her flame, while Mitsuba unleashed her own. Shinoa told Mika to run away, and carved a path before them, allowing Mika to dart off with Kairu. However, a soldier knocked her down, and tried ending her, but Narumi protected her. With the squad still in chaos, they discovered that new vampires were descending towards them. As they landed, the vampires began slaying them, but Shinoa saved Narumi from his doom. Before his eyes, Endo was slain by a vampire, and as Kajiyama avenged her, he was slain by another vampire. Angered by the sight, Narumi tried joining the fight, but Shinya stopped him and told him that they would not survive the battle. At the same time, more vampires began to descend from aircrafts. As Shinya blasted a vampire, he screamed at the squad to head to the nearest facility before blocking another vampire and ending him. So they ran off. However, Narumi was frozen up in fear at the sight of his slain comrades. So Shinya punched him back to his senses, and they started running off together. Meanwhile, Mika was staggering away, thirsty and drained, and losing tomato sauce. As he fell from exhaustion, he realized that his wounds were not healing, so he checked for some spare juice, but discovered that none of it was left. When he tried waking Kairu, he noticed that a few children were hiding in the old mall before him. So he forced his way inside, and caught the boy's throat before taking him down, thirsty and desperate for his juice. But when he tried taking a chunk, the boy called him a monster, causing him to return to his senses. Utilizing his opportunity, the poor boy ran off in fear. After a moment, Mika began to pull Kairu into the mall, and with Mika safe, he decided to hide away. Meanwhile in Kairu's spirit world, Asura Maru told him that he had been unconscious for several hours. However, he was only worried about his friends, and wondered if he managed to rescue Guren. Asura Maru told him that she could only see through his eyes, and could not guarantee that his friends were safe. At that moment, Kairu woke up to the real world. When he saw Mika in the darkness, he drew his sword and carefully approached him. However, Mika jumped towards him, and as he smacked his sword, he took him down, asking for a taste of his juice. Realizing Mika was in pain, Kairu offered himself up, but Mika swiftly backed away. As he began coughing up sauce, Kairu tried helping him, but he told him to stay away because he was still thirsty for his juice. However, Kairu told him that he was willing to share it, so he drew him close and told him that he wants to end his pain. Mika told him that he has never sipped human juice, as it would stop him from growing older and would leave him as a vampire forever. However, when Kairu tried persuading him, Mika told him that he was afraid that taking the juice would make him a monster. Kairu told him that he does not want to lose him, and was willing to offer him his juice. So he picked his sword and showed him a cut, and his juice began dripping to the floor. With Mika unable to resist it, he flashed to Kairu and began to suck his juice. When he was done, his eyes turned red, completing his transition into an immortal vampire. Empire. Watch this next video. Till next time, my fellow legendary plot masters.